Hey everyone! So, as many of you have noticed, lately I've been playing around a lot with 360 art and video, and I've had a lot of questions on how I do this, most of which I've tried to cover over on Twitter, but in case you're still confused or you're just not a Twitter person, I'm going to do my best to cover everything in this video right now. Or at least start to cover everything, because uh, this video is going to be the first in a mini-series, as trying to make one single video on this topic would probably be a bit too difficult. There's just too much information to be thrown at you all in one go for everything that I would like to cover. So in this first video, I'm going to cover what 360 images and videos are, and how to make the images that I've been making for those. The next video will be covering the actual video making side of things, and there will probably be a third one after that covering some bonus stuff and some more experimental nonsense that I'm still trying to pull off <laughs> right now. So uh, that one might be a bit further off into the future, but the second one should be out fairly shortly after this one. I'll have a playlist of tutorials in the description below. Many of these tutorials will repeat what I'm about to say, or go in depth in other areas of the process that I just haven't found as useful or important. So who knows, maybe if I don't explain it in a way that works for you, these people will say it in a way that makes better sense. So I would recommend checking those guys out as well for further understanding on how to do all of this. So first of all is how it works. We'll start with that and then we'll get into the setup that you need to do for the images. So essentially what you'll be doing is projecting a texture onto the inside of a sphere via equirectangular projection. This is what a grid of it looks like. Oh, there's lots of different examples here. And it's basically just a panorama unwrapped if you've ever seen that sort of thing before. The image is two by one or twice as wide as it is tall. And if you want something decent looking, I recommend around 6,000 by 3,000 pixels. Most of the ones uh, off of Google, you'll probably need to enlarge quite a bit, but it's a still perfectly good base. If you can manage higher than 6,000 by 3,000, I recommend that. Really go as high as your computer will allow you to. Uh, bigger is better. You want um, the least amount of distortion you can get away with. I would say anything over like 10,000 10, by 5,000 might be a bit overkill just because you don't really need a 4K 360 image. But I mean, hey, if you want to mess around with that, mess around with that, you know? The ones I personally will be using in the meantime are made by a guy called Jama. They're available as a set with a bunch of other resources over on his Gumroad, which I will have a link to in the description because he's been absolutely amazing and really vital into me learning how to do this as well. So yeah, here we are in Photoshop. This requires a version of Photoshop that is Creative Cloud 2015 or higher. I think it might be 2015 point something, but just you know, make sure to try and clear that and see if you've got those functionalities if you are working with a version of 2015. You should be alright. And over in Edit, uh, where is it? Preferences and Performance. Give me a Photoshop. Um, you want to make sure that this Use Graphics Processor thingy is checked. I had it unchecked in order to try and better optimize my Photoshop. And then I realized after turning it off, it didn't allow me to use any of the 3D functions, which I no, no, I needed those. So make sure you have that checked. I'm not sure about the advanced settings. I have them, I haven't touched them. They're just like this and it works fine. And maybe if anything doesn't match here and you're still not able to check them, uh, try and match up with this. I'm not, uh, I don't actually know a ton about this other than you need to have the thing checked. So what you want to do is you want to take your image and go to 3D, New Mesh from Layer, Mesh Preset, and then Spherical Panorama. And you just want to click that and give Photoshop a second for it to convert. If it comes up with you uh, asking you to switch to a 3D workspace, just say yes to that. And then it will have converted. You might get a weird sphere thing uh, in the top left, but uh, you won't need that. You can just close it down. It's not important. And then also pull out the 3D panel. It should be around here, I think. Uh, that's pretty much what you're going to be using to navigate the 3D, the 360 space. It's not as intimidating as it might look at first. You can ignore the environment, the, let's see, the scene, and the infinite light. 
and also camera one, which you can click on to reset your current view. I found that you also only really want to use the spinny move mode too. It should be what you have selected when it first uh, loads up like this. But if you ever accidentally change it, it is just this button here. Let's see. Orbit the 3D camera. Yeah, you just really want to be moving the camera. So under current view, which is the one that we'll be using the most, just click once in the image and you can then pan around and you can see that it moves like that in the image, which is pretty cool. Watch out for when you double click because uh, it has this annoying habit of moving from your current view layer thing to the spherical panorama. And if you move that, aside from the fact that it goes all kind of weird and you ended up with a tilted horizon, you're not actually moving the camera, you're moving the mesh position and that's a pain when you come to export it so just don't don't move the mesh in fact it's probably a good idea to drag out your history tab and have that so you can see if there's any mesh position 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 mesh position changes change that back and make sure we're on the current view again for best results i found you do need to change the is it field of vision or field of view the fov to around 10 anywhere between 10 and 15 is pretty good it gives you a more natural looking wider angle lens and also is a bit closer to what you will see in YouTube or on ArtStation. So painting in 3D, it's just a combination of switching between the camera, uh, painting some stuff with the brush and then going back and adjusting the camera and drawing some more. With the brush selected, you want to go to this little paintbrush here and you want to change the paint system to projection. I mean, you can test out both, but you'll see that projection it feels much more like you are drawing in the 3D space. There are tutorials on the playlist that go over that a little bit more in depth. And then you can just go ahead and start drawing. It is a bit laggy. Might be more laggy or less laggy depending on your PC. My PC is fairly good, but it's not super duper duper good. So I only like to sketch in 360. You know, if Photoshop's your main program, props to you, this will probably be a little bit easier but I like Clip Studio a whole lot more. So I do just sketch and then I import it into Clip Studio and turn it into a finished drawing. To export out the unwrapped version, you want to go down to spherical panorama texture. Then you want to go up to the diffuse, right click on the little icon thingy and then go to edit texture. And then it will show you an unwrapped version of what you've made or what you've drawn in the 360. And then you want to save that out as a PNG and as a base for drawing in another program. You don't want to just, oops. You don't want to just come to here and then export this out right here as a PNG because you'll just get a screenshot and that's not, <laughs> that's not very helpful. So for my most recent 360 image was for a cover of Limelight. And this is the finished version, of course, but this was the sketch that I had underneath. It is not, I don't spend a ton of time actually drawing in 360 because I'm now comfortable with the grid format. And so I definitely do need to sketch out the 3D 360 space, but it's fairly minimal. And then a lot of the work is then done out of Photoshop for me. And then to re-import it back in, you can do all of the steps that I've just shown in importing the grid and then making it uh, into three, 360 again. Or you can just go up to, if you still have it open or if you're working in uh, Photoshop, you can just go up to uh, this and then go replace texture. And then, okay, let's say that this is one of my images, replace the texture with the updated version and boom. So that is how to draw in 360. That is how to make your image. And then you just carry that on until you consider it a finished work of art. If you just want to make 360 artwork uh, to upload to places like Facebook or ArtStation, and I think there's like some VR apps and that type of thing, that's it. That's pretty much everything. The last step is to inject the right metadata into the images so websites and applications know what to do with it. There are some online converters I found, but they never seem to really work for the artworks I've made. They just uh, I think their primary purpose is just for photographs and that sort of thing. 
I have found a tutorial on how to add the right metadata via Photoshop itself though, though and that works really really well. I'll have a link to that in the description for anyone who needs it and there are step-by-step -step instructions on that page itself but I will just demonstrate in here as well. So here's one of my images that doesn't have the metadata currently. I'm gonna go to file and then hit file info. You want to go down to raw data and then go to uh, template and then import and then navigate to the XMP file. 360 XMP file and then go to keep and then and then you choose the last option keep original metadata but append to matching blah 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 and then click OK. And then when you save this out as a PNG or a JPEG or whatever now, it will read as a 360 image on website pages and all of that. And that's it. That's your image all finished. Next video, I'll cover everything on the video side of things uh, using After Effects and Premiere to turn the images into full out YouTube videos. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I feel that I'll be able to answer a lot of the questions that you might have now in the next video, but by all means pitch them to me so I have them in mind for the next video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in part two.